All right, guys, let's talk iPhone 16. Let me tell you about my experience with the iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Plus, and I've got some things to share. Buckle up, because Apple did not come to play this year. There are some pretty sweet upgrades that I got to experience firsthand. Now, before I even get into the nitty gritty, let me just say, if you're anything like me and love discovering new ways to make life easier with your phone, you're going to love these new features. Seriously, the second I started playing with these new buttons, I knew my daily routine was about to get an upgrade. First up, the camera control button. When I heard about it, I was intrigued, but I didn't expect to love it as much as I do now. It's not your average button. It's more of a capacitive sensor that lets you launch the camera without fumbling through the lock screen. You know when you're rushing to take a photo, but by the time you get the camera open, the moment's gone. Yeah, say goodbye to that frustration. I just gave it a firm press and bam, camera launched instantly. And depending on how hard I pressed, I could swipe through different modes, zoom in, zoom out, switch to video. It was like having a mini control panel in my hand. And I gotta say, that's a game changer for someone like me who's always snapping pics. Speaking of upgrades, Apple also decided to bring the action button from the Pro models to the base iPhones. And let me tell you, I've been using it constantly. At first I thought, okay cool, but do I really need another button? But after programming it to make my daily coffee order, I kid you not, I was hooked. I mean, who doesn't want to skip the app and have their coffee order set with a single tap? I've also got it programmed as a shortcut for silent mode during meetings, and it saved me from some awkward moments. If you're into customizing your phone to fit your life, this button is like a blank canvas waiting for you to turn it into whatever you need it to be. Now, as much as I'm all about these new buttons, I have to say, the design is giving me mixed vibes. Don't get me wrong, I love the new colors, especially the green and pink options. I may or may not be obsessed with the green, but if you've seen the iPhone 15, this year's design is pretty similar. It's almost like Apple decided, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but just slapped on some fresh paint. That said, the fun bright colors on the base models are a nice touch. Perfect for those of us who want our tech to be as vibrant as we are. Let's dive into the performance though, because that's where this phone really shines. It's powered by Apple's new A18 chip, and it's fast, like really fast. I could feel the difference right away, especially when using Apple Intelligence. This AI tech that Apple's been teasing is integrated right into the iPhone 16, and I couldn't wait to test it out. The potential here is wild. It's built to make everything smoother, smarter, and more intuitive. But here's the kicker. Some of the best features aren't even live yet. We're going to have to wait for a few software updates to really see what Apple intelligence can do. The anticipation is real, people. One thing that did blow me away, though, is this new visual intelligence feature. It's like living in the future. And while that feature isn't launching right away, I'm so hyped for when it does. It's the kind of innovation that makes me feel like my phone is more than just a device. It's my personal assistant. Oh, and the battery life? It's got an upgrade, too. While Apple didn't spill the exact details, they did confirm it's packing a bigger battery this year, and it definitely shows. I've noticed my phone lasts longer throughout the day, even with heavy use. Paired with the A18 chip and iOS 18, it's a relief to not have to carry my charger everywhere. If you're like me and constantly glued to your phone, this one's for you. But I can't wrap this up without talking about the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max. I got to play around with them, and these things are huge. The Pro is now a 6.3-inch screen, while the Pro Max has a massive 6.9-inch display. For context, the Pro Max is almost like carrying a mini tablet in your pocket. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about the size, but after watching some videos on that bigger screen, I was convinced. And the new Desert Titanium color, way better in person than it looked in the rumors. It's classy, understated, and definitely going to turn heads. As for camera upgrades, the Pro models come with new video capabilities. 4K at 120 frames per second. I haven't had the chance to fully test this yet, but if you're into video content or vlogging, this is going to be a treat. There's also a sideways camera bump that now enables spatial video. That's right, if you've got an Apple Vision Pro at home, this phone is ready for the future of immersive media. 
And, okay, I've got to be honest, the fact that some of these AI features aren't launching at the same time as the phone itself is a little frustrating. I mean, it's, it's, it's like getting a new toy and not being able to play with it right away. But hey, I guess it just means we have even more to look forward to later this year. So, the verdict? If you're thinking about upgrading, this year's iPhone lineup is absolutely worth it. Between the camera improvements, the fun new buttons, and Apple's continued push into AI, I'm genuinely excited for what's next. Plus, the iPhone 16 and 16 Plus are up for pre-order this Friday, September 13th, so if you're planning on upgrading, get ready to click that buy button fast. Now tell me, are you as hyped for the iPhone 16 as I am? What feature are you most excited about? Drop a comment below and let me know. And while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my deep dives into the latest tech releases. Trust me, this is only the beginning.